Okay, hi. Today is a little different. We're going to talk about artist materials. I'm going to talk about my brushes, uh, the place where I paint over here, and what else? Um, maybe a little tiny bit about colors, and maybe some more about drawing supplies and what I use for drawing. And then there's a follow-on to this. I don't think this will all be in one episode. It'll be in two. That will start talking about some of my oil painting tools and how I use them. So enjoy today. I hope you have a good time and leave some comments and let me know what you'd like to see in the future. Thanks and have a great day. Bye. Okay, so this is where I do most of my watercolor painting in the new apartment in Bavaria. I have a separate room for doing oils. We can take a look at that in a few minutes if you'd like. And you can see the camera's hanging up here. I'm filming this with my um, smartphone camera. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about some of my materials and why I've got certain things around and, and what, everything, what everything is and what it does here. I mean, you can see up here on the wall, I've got these color samples so that I can just look up and decide what I'm going to do. I have different palettes, and they're all labeled. I know what's in them. An example, okay, this here, this is White Knight's paints that I bought in Groningen on 5th of November, 1918, and that's the colors here. I have another set of White Knight's, which is hanging back there, with some other palettes, and that's these. This is their fantasy set, so the colors are a little brighter. Then I have other things here. I have a collection of Sennelier paints that I use. They're real nice. And I have some, some other things, some Umpton. I have some um, original stuff that I got that's Rembrandt and uh, what else? Old Holland. So I have different palettes for doing different things. Usually I try to stick with one group of colors for one painting. Depends on what I'm doing. Uh, there are some exceptions to that. Definitely. Um, so yeah, anyways, let's, um, let's talk about brushes and where I keep my water and a few of the other little tools and stuff around here. And then, just for convenience, I keep all my painting stuff over on, on one of these shelves. So I've got some of my watercolor paper here, some of my drawing paper, the sketchbooks I'm currently using, and it takes up two shelves here. And then I have a bunch of, uh prepared watercolor boards with watercolor paint on them. So basically, I can just start painting as soon as I get an idea. Is that a good idea? I probably have too many right now. Um, I did this back last summer, and now the tape's been on there for a long time, and it's not good for the watercolor paper, so really I should paint all this stuff up and use it. But it's not going to happen that fast. So those are the important things here. Let... Um, Let's go through and we'll talk about the brushes and some of the drawing tools and some of the other stuff. So I'm going to do that on a separate... I'm going to do that with the overhead camera here. <coughs> okay. So let's talk about... Uh, what do we want to talk about first? Drawing tools or um, paint brushes? Let's talk about paint brushes first. Alright, so you can see I'm kind of disorganized here. But for paint brushes, I'm not really disorganized. The things that are out here are the things that I'm currently using. <clears throat> Let's split these up in different groups. And we'll talk about these two. <clears throat> now, not, not absolutely everything here, unfortunately. This is not for painting, which should really go away. That's a little Logan mat cutter knife that sometimes I use and sometimes I don't. Normally I just use these kind of knives, or I got a metal one here somewhere when I need to cut something. Those are real good. 
All right, so brushes, okay. First of all, you see a lot of these red brushes. These are Cosmotop Spin, Da Vinci Cosmotop Spin brushes. I really like these. They're stiffer than the Kolonsky Sables, and I find that they're great for painting, for what I do. They're great for detail work. Um, so these are the rounds. 5580 series. I've got a 2, a 4, a 6, and an 8. And really, this should be cleaned. I didn't clean this over the last painting. Bad Chris. Really, you should clean your brushes after you paint, but it is watercolor. I mean, if it dries, you can just dip them in water and gently clean it out. About once every six months, I also put them in the brush soap. I got some good brush soap. I'll show you that in a minute. And um, I do that. Then here, these are some sort of filbert shaped brushes. They're pointy, kind of oblong, pointy and round. I got two of those. I got an 8 and a 14. Those are great sometimes when you want to do little bits of detail, but you, you've got a lot of detail to do with one color and you need a big brush. You can do small detail work with big brushes if they have good points, and most of these Cosmotot spins, unless they've been used for a long time, I, I love these things. They're great, man. Um, then I have my squares for bricks and stuff. And so here I also have a 2, a 4, an 8, and a 16. I use that sometimes for doing um, skies. I also use I also use this for doing skies, the 14, the big one. And sometimes, we'll get to that in a minute, I use some of these tools over here. It depends on my mood. I, I don't really have hard and fast rules, but yeah, I do try to use bigger brushes whenever I'm doing something that's a big area because it goes a lot faster and it looks better. If you use a little tiny brush in a big area, it's much harder to get it consistently the same shade. But maybe that's the effect you want. So I don't know. So let's see, what's the next group? The next group are these. These are called riggers or liners. And if you'll notice, they've got long hairs and they come to a very fine point. And of these, I've got a zero, a one, a two, and a four. And they originally, they were originally designed for doing the rigging on ship paintings. And they're used both in oil color and watercolor. I love these for doing lines. They're great once you learn how to use them. They take little work, but once you get it down, they're good. Okay, now there's some other brushes over here I haven't talked about. All right, here are my Kolonskis. They're general purpose brushes. They're all rounds. And the ones that I actually like the best here, of all of these, believe it or not, are these Jackson's Kolonsky Sables. I've got a 1, a 2, and an 8. They came as a set. Kolonsky Sables are a lot cheaper in Europe than they are in America. So if you come to Europe, buy your Kolonsky Sables here. It's, of course, like if you want the really good Spanish Kolonsky Sables, go to Spain. They're a lot cheaper there. If you want to buy old Holland paints cheap, go, go to Chevignan. They're cheap there. They're not cheap, but they're cheaper than anywhere else. So I like those a lot. And then these are other Kolonsky Sables I use sometimes. This is a liner, a zero liner. I've got some... Da Vinci Klaus Kolonsky Martyr, which is a grade down, I think. They're kind of getting old. I don't know if you can see the tips here, but they're not in real good shape. They need to go get a, a dose of the, the brush soap. And I've got these Raphael Kolonskys. They're all right. And i got a Da Vinci Maestro Kolonsky. Anyways, I got some of those. I started off with a lot of Kolonskis. I tried these two. These are um, Rubens, which aren't as good. This one. 
And these are Da Vinci Finest Red Sable. We're just a step down from Kalonsky. Yeah, I got these Rubens brushes. Sometimes I use them for doing color washes. I find that the hair, the, the hair on here is really, really soft, which is just not my thing. But other people like that. And then I have this thing. This is a good liner, this Cobra Sabre. And it's good because it's like a pen. It's easy to use. Okay, for specialty brushes, I got this. This is good for doing large sections and getting texture at the same time. It's another Jackson's brush, Artist Hacka. <coughs> I've got these pure squirrel mop brushes. I've used these a little bit to do washes and stuff, like background washes. They're really good if you need to soak up a lot of water and put it on the page. Again, they're real soft, which is sort of not my thing, so I don't use them as much, but sometimes I do. This is a Japanese brush that I use very occasionally but not too often. Those are some of those brushes. There are a couple of more liners here. There's a Kolonsky liner here that's a number two and there's this Galaxy Nylon number 10 which I wish I could find another one. Is I got this in Holland in Groningen and I never seen them again but they, I really like this brush. This is great but it's kind of big for a liner. Then I have some weird specialty brushes here. These, these fan brushes I use for doing grass. That's what they're for basically. And then these, these I also use for bushes and grass and stuff and effects. They say it's a tosh on them, whatever that is. They're cheap. They didn't cost a lot of money. They're boar's head. But they are pretty good for doing either um, making like dirt and ground that's a whole that, that's all different colors and stuff. Or um, they're also good for other stuff. I think I think all of these need to spend some time in the in the brush soap. This is a, a big one. Again, that's good for textures and for big washes. And then there's these dagger brushes. I got these last year and I haven't used them very much. But when I have used them, I've liked them. Because you can do big stuff with them and you can do little detailed stuff with them. Which is pretty cool. So I got that stuff. You probably notice I have two lights here that shine down and that give my area some space, some, some light. I also have these. These are older. These are just like the other brushes. There's a number five round and then the rest are and then there's a what is there? There's a two round and then there's some squares. The ends of these are a little bit torn up because they're older. They've been around for many years now. And I keep them with these marked tape on them when I need something that isn't absolutely real precise but I need that shape and again I want to get some texture so I use those. Um... I use these eyedroppers. There's three of them sitting out here. I got more around. I got them at a dime store for like a dozen for a dollar. They're great for when I'm, I'm trying to get the right consistency between paint and water. These things I've talked about before. That's how I keep my water. You can see the flies like to get in there because there's honey in this paint. And I hate that, but that's the way it is. Um, these are from <coughs> containers of bath salts. Alright, um, painting, oh, here's another painting tool. I have a small palette knife. This is useful for cutting pages off of a block. And you can actually paint with it with watercolor, too. I got that in Holland, in Groningen. There's a great art store in Groningen, Flockstra. There's another really great one in Utrecht, but I can't remember the name of it. Utrecht has a really great one. Shevingen, Shevenhagen has a great outlet store for old Holland paints and supplies. Most, most Dutch cities have a really good art store somewhere. Just ask around. Alright, so next we'll talk about um, my drawing tools. <coughs> 
Okay, so drawing tools. <clears throat> First, before we do that, I do have two little spray bottles. I use these with watercolors for spraying water. They're pretty useful. Um, so basically, my standard go-to drawing implements are either these Stabler mechanical pencils or Faber-Castell because that's what you get here. They're pretty cheap. I keep these with a couple of different lead weights in them. Some are darker, some are lighter. Depends. I also use these regular Stadler pencils or Faber-Castell and Stadler both. And you can see here I got a couple of odds and ends. This is my on the road drawing kit. So I take that with me when I go out and go sketching in public. Um, I don't do a lot of painting open air, but sometimes I do, and then I take one of the palettes with me, and then usually a pad of paper, and just go paint. Um, I usually have a range of, of hardnesses here, somewhere between, um, I have some hard leads for doing the setup of the drawing, and then I have some soft leads for making the darkness in them. These are little brundishers, burnishers, I'm not sure how you say that in English. They use for smearing the um, either the charcoal or the lead around the graphite. It's not lead today. So yeah, and there's an eraser here for taking stuff out. And then I also use these little erasers on the tops. And I keep some erasers around like this. Somewhere I also have some of those kneaded erasers. I don't like those as much anymore. I like the, the white hard ones better these days, but that's just personal preference. So that's my, carry my kit with me. <coughs> I also use these. These are architecture pencils that I used to use in college. You can get fancier ones than this, cost more. Um, with individual leads. I love these for doing drafting. I always have, they're great. So I use those, I'm real happy with them. What else do I have here? Uh, I have this for doing drawings. I have a collection. These are just, um, what are they, Koenor. And it's a full set from uh, 2H to like 7B, I think it is. And there's some magnetism here or something. Koenor 12 drawing sketching pencils, professional graphite pencils. Anyways, I like those. Those are I use those too. Uh, let's see here. I got a couple of different sharpeners. Plus, I usually carry a knife with me. This is great at home. It's a battery sharpener. I use that regularly, especially with my colored pencils. Oh yeah, I should probably get those out. So anyways, this is another sharpener. This is for these here. You can either make it thin point or a thick point. I really need to get better quality one of these sharpeners. At some point I will. And uh, another plastic eraser. I have a set of Faber-Castell colored pencils, polychromos. I got this on sale years ago. I'm still using it. I really like these. These are nice colored pencils. Every once in a while I get in the mood and I do colored pencil drawing. I have one problem here. This thing, this one just fell apart in my hands. So I wrapped it with thread and glue and put it back together and it's worked fine ever since. I've had these for years. I don't do a lot of pencil drawing, but sometimes I do. And they're nice colored pencils. Oh, no, no, no. Let's see. What else should I talk about here? I have some stuff like this. These are my pencil leads. These are some, what's left is some standard German drawing pencils. There's also some, some, just some plain leads and some charcoal in here for occasionally I dig that stuff out and some other odds and ends. All that stuff's useful sometimes. 
These are for signing my paintings. I have these these metal points. I got some of them separate and some of them came in this set. It's a German calligraphy set. I don't know what this thing does. It's a little piece of rubber. This would be great if you wanted to do really fancy calligraphy or something. Anyways, you get these sets here. This company. They're all over the place. These are set in Hall El Fischina Banzug und Plakate Federn Einhaller Ein Hebe Magnet. Oh, that's a magnet in there. For lifting the things out, I guess. This is a halter holder. And these are Banzug. The other one I think is a plaquette. Yep, these are Banzug Fader. Fader means feather. It comes from the old feather when you had feathered pens. But yeah, those are easy to get here. Um, occasionally I use these. Something I got. This is a normal dip pen. This, this is really pretty cool. This is a glass pen. These were common here after the war. So they were cheap to make and kids could use them. You dip it in ink. The ink goes up in these little spirals. And then you write like this. It's actually a really effective little tool for writing. I like these. These are cool. I had, I think I had another one, but I may have broken it. Or maybe it's just hidden somewhere. I'm not sure. I also have a bunch of colored ink stuff, too. I used to do a lot of stuff in colored ink. I don't do as much of that anymore, but I might get back into it. So then I got some indie ink for signing my paintings. I got some Sennelier, and I got some Windsor and Newton. I've got a compass for doing circles when I need to that has the light on it. I got that at the local store here, the local drug store, local place. And then I got these triangles. I got some 45s, some 30s, a projector, and I've got one good triangle drafting style triangle and I got a curve here so you can set this to whatever angle you want again most of this this came from real drafting store where I got the bar all the rest of this stuff is just like from the local store and these are perfectly good triangles for the drawing that I'm doing I don't really need anything bigger because I'm not working on huge gigantic sheets of vellum like I was in architecture school this desk is about half the size of my desk in architecture school. There was a much bigger parallel bar. It was five feet long and it was twice as far this way. It was a lot different than this. I'd like to have that again maybe, but I don't know. This is fine. And then I just have a bunch of rulers here that I picked up along the way. And really the metal rulers are nicer. They last longer. These things they get dented and get little little nicks and knocks in them, but they're alright. They're not good for cutting. You can't really use them for cutting. That won't work. And then, there's this huge parallel bar that slides up and down. And you can even do things like do it like this, and move it the other direction. To be kind of careful about that. So yeah, that's the best drafting tool I've ever learned to use in my life. This thing slides up and down. This is not an expensive one. This was like $30, I think, 30 euros, 35 euros. It was not very expensive. Um, the really good ones are Mayliners out of America. They can be pretty expensive, a couple hundred dollars. <coughs> They're metal. They have the same system, but everything's metal. <coughs> There's rollers <coughs> that they move easier. And instead of having string, they have wire. I would like to have a Mayliner, but here in Europe, Mayliners cost like $400. If you can find one, they're very difficult to get, or you have to import them, and then you have to pay for them to be imported. You have to pay tariff to bring them into the country. So yeah, that's what I use for my drawing supplies. Um, I guess something else I should say, I do all my paintings, when I have loose paper, I do it on a board like this. You get these little pieces of plywood. 
at the local hardware store. They're like about, for this size, they're like four euros for five of them. The big ones that I have are maybe eight euros for five of them. And that's what I use for the background painting. And they're perfect. Because see, I can just switch things out, do different stuff. It has a hard surface. You can work on it. I love those things. They're great. Um, what else is worth showing you? Is there anything else useful here for drawing or painting? No, I think that's about it, really. I think that's the, the largest part of my drawing and painting equipment for um, watercolors and drawing. Like I said, I have a separate room that I use for doing oil colors. These days I keep that stuff separate. And, um, what else should I say about that? I try to keep the window open when I'm painting to keep the fumes out of my body and bring a little fan in there and blow it out of them. And I'm really seriously thinking about wearing gloves when I paint with that stuff. The oil paints with the linseed oil, they're not really that bad. Although some of those colors, like the cobalts and the cadmiums, those are poisonous. It's not the oil that'll kill you. It's the pigment in the oil. It's not healthy. Um, but the turpentine or the odorless thinner, actually turpentine is probably safer to use than odorless thinner from what I've read. That stuff's not too good for your lungs. And given the fact that I had some health problems a year and a half ago, I don't think I'm taking any more chances with any of that stuff. So that's the plan. Okay, so there you've seen basically what my drawing setup is. Oh, and this board here, this is just a sheet of um, the backing board that I use when I make my um, my mats. Um, it's very I, pretty much I can work day in, day out for years at a time, and I don't need anything else. Some of the paper I use is in sheets, as you've seen. And of course, like everybody else, I have a collection of pads or blocks. Every single one of these is 100% cotton watercolor paper. Man, that is the most important thing. If you're going to paint watercolors, get 100% cotton watercolor paper. Don't try to paint on anything else. There is no substitute for the real thing. Um, most of what I use is hot press paper. This is hot press. Uh, this is hot press. The arches is hot press. This is this is not. This is a cold press with a little texture. Got a little more texture to it. And I have various sizes. I have I don't know, twelve or fifteen of these different pads in different sizes, from little tiny ones up to great big ones. And I'm real happy with pretty much all of it. The arches is an old standby. Um, the Moon de Roy Canson is real nice. I like that. Really, I like all of it. Um, each one works a little bit differently. They have a little bit different quality to them. They're not all exactly the same. Because of the density of the weave of the paper and that sort of thing. But, yeah, that's what I like using. Um, for the sheets, I like the uh, Hannah Mula 100% cotton hot press paper. I can't remember what they call it. And I also like the Sanders Waterford 2 and 300 pound hot press. Sanders Waterford is just the best in the world, I think. I need to get another load of that. I've got but I've still got some sheets here to use up first and I'm not buying any until until it's, I'm out. So those are my two favorites. Arches is also good and I'm basically I'm basically cool with using whatever whatever is available. So as long as it's hot pressed, I'm, I'm generally pretty happy with it. So, <clears throat> so anyways, that's my paper collection. And so yeah, hopefully this is helpful for you.